We'll again go random random. Covenant 25. Uh, as this battle, well, as this, excuse me, this run begins, it's a Awoken Umbra. Oh boy. Penumbra and Root Seeds. Interesting. We've got two Antumbra Assaults, two Restoration Detonations, and a Gem Trove. These random starting cards are pretty good. Uh, although, personally, this is one of my least favorite clan combinations. I'm quite curious to see how we can maybe make it work. So, Umbra Awoken. Kind of interesting here. The Root Seeds make me want to boost the attack power of one unit in particular. We have pretty good Morsel Generation thanks to Entumbra Assault, which also gives us a way to kill troublesome backline enemy units. Meanwhile, Restoration Detonation says we want to have one big tanky unit in the front taking damage. It's interesting. Uh, do we take Artifact first or Champ first? I'd like to know if we're getting Double Gorge. Oh, Shadow Box! When you play the 20th Morsel Unit of the battle, deal 150 unit, 150 damage to everything. That's pretty cool. Hard to activate, but if you get enough Morsel Generation, it's awesome. Iron Drop Cage is really interesting. Days 2, if you would ascend or descend an enemy unit, it's pretty cool, but very niche. Take the Shadow Box. <clears throat> Six Whoopers, thanks for 13 months of support. Let's pick another one. Ooh, apply Rooted to enemy units that reach the top, so you have an extra turn to kill things before they get to uh, ascend. Early Capricious Reflection, though, also incredible. Ah, oh, Maxim paid for a dad joke, and they expect a dad joke, and a dad joke they shall get. I'm warning you, I'm in a mood for train-related puns, so my humor is going to go really off the rails here. It's very hard to keep me on track, I know. What's that? I seem to be hearing a lot of kaboos from the chat. Hmm. I'm actually really torn between Root Split Mask and Capricious Reflection here. Reflection's just so fun. Let's do it. <clears throat> Random upgrade on every card for the whole run. It might be terrible, but it might be awesome. Okay, and we're offered either Architect or Glutton. I haven't done a whole lot of Architect Penumbra. Architect Penumbra adds additional capacity to the floor, so they're essentially like a mini... a mini champ. They're meant to go behind the other units on the floor, just contributing some additional damage. I think Glutton Penumbra could work pretty well, too. They get big stat bonuses every time they eat a morsel, and we do have pretty good morsel generation. I don't believe artifacts can reappear in Ecrathal, so yeah, just like Spire, it's one and done. The puns just keep chugging along. Hmm. I don't feel like I've played with Architect Penumbra much. But yeah, Glutton could help a future monstrous pick. Cross path into the Trample variant. This makes me wish I'd taken Root Split Mask. Um, but let's do it. Let's go Glutton Penumbra here. Something that occurred to me after our Morsel Maid run that didn't end up winning is that uh, Glutton Penumbra gets way more stats per Morsel than just about anything else. Pro tip with Umbra for High Covenant. The first unit you deploy on the top floor gets Ember Drain, but you can make that a Morsel and then deploy your champ. Your champ will eat the Morsel with Ember Drain and therefore you don't take any penalty here. Let's see, five damage to the front unit. So how do I kill these things? Hmm. I don't have an easy way to do what I want there. Do we apply Root Seeds to Penumbra, or do we deploy a Train Steward? Doesn't seem like the Train Steward will do much. Give me more card draw. 
need to reach 45 damage at least. Let's go back to two speed here. Definitely want to kill the Collector. Although killing this Discipled Foot Soldier might be an important idea too. More morsels. Excellent. Might as well deploy the train steward, not that it really accomplishes much. Just get it out of the deck, though. Um, resto deaths don't do anything because we're at full health, sadly. But sure. Have some more health, Mr. Steward. Hey, we got to 45. Wow, I could even afford to gem trove. Hmm. Next turn, we're guaranteed to draw in Tumber Assault to kill this unit. Okay, so we'll take five damage to the pyre from this priest. Um, and otherwise, we clear all the units. That's great. I guess in that case, I can play the gem trove. Let's do it. Attack power and damage shield. I like it. Coca Soco Loca. Thanks for the four months. What a name, what a player. Yeah, all we have to do is play 10 more morsels. We're almost there. It's actually pretty encouraging to get this many down on uh, the first combat. stats. So our boss killing is going to be almost entirely handled by uh, our champ. It means we... Oh my goodness. It means we need to make a priority of... Picking things that can kill uh, frontline units. These are three really good cards. Hold over Perils of Protection is ridiculous. <clears throat> oh yeah, we are fighting Seraph the D Diligent, which would make this card a bit tricky to use. Otherwise, really good. Apply Rage and Ember Drain to a friendly unit. Gain Ember. We can both use this as a rage generator. It also works as a ember generator. Gains three ember when played. You can play it on a morsel if you want to. One of my favorite things to do with a Perils of Production deck is, yeah, make most of the deck zero cost if you can. And then the Ember Drain won't matter. Sure. I'm not going to say no to Holdover Perils of Production. What about Holdover Vinegrass? That's a no thank you. I do like a one-time 30 damage sting. Eternal Stone Pyre Grow seems kind of bad. This also gives us additional Ember. But at a big draw penalty. Let's take a sting. Here's Morsel Maid again. 
Morsel made with, uh, curiously enough, Encant armor too. I didn't realize the random upgrades could be from the clan-specific ones that you're not allowed to take. That's fun. We tried doing Morsel Made plus Gorge Penumbra last time, and it didn't work out, but maybe with more Morsel Generation and Shadow Box, we could make it work. <clears throat> How does hunger work? When Morsels are played on this unit's floor, it immediately eats them, regardless of where it is in the battle line. Doesn't have to be the frontmost unit. Alloyed Construct is really difficult to use. It's a very powerful multi-striker, but it has to eat morsels in order to attack. Which is challenging. That's a pretty chunky Vine Mother, right, with the large stone? The sting spells per turn will be interesting. I agree. Allied Construct does work better if it's infused into itself. Then it has multi-strike two and gets two fuel per morsel it eats. Which is pretty sweet. We do have Hellvent Divine Temple coming up. Which could allow us to get a self-infused Alloyed Construct here. Vine Mother would be a nice way to... To make holdover perils of production completely fine versus Seraph. That's true. Hmm. I do kind of dig that. And we can find relics that boost stings, too. Yeah, she is three capacity, which is a bit of an issue. She'll probably be in the middle floor most times. Let's take her. So do we go to a Merchant of Steel? Is that even as important here? I think getting the Gem Trove upgraded might be really important. If the units come with a free upgrade, it's no longer as much of a priority. Hmm. Umber unit versus Awoken unit is also a, a choice. Hmm. Let me go Merchant of Magic. Mostly here for the minus one cost. He's back. Morsel Master with a large stone. When you summon a morsel unit on this floor, make an additional copy. Hmm. And that's also the essence. Yeah, Morsel Made and then into Alloyed Construct is pretty cool, right? Do those copies add to Shadow Box? I believe they do, yes. I think they do. I'll take you. Alright, and let's look at the artifacts. Stings get magic power and piercing. That's the one. Now the Vine Mother's pretty sweet. 
20 damage piercing, and this thing also has 40 damage piercing. Excellent. Could even make it 50 damage piercing. Free Vine Grasp of Return, also a fun option. Yep. Ooh, actually, up this. That's also important. Don't have enough money to make rerolling particularly worth it, so I'll keep our cash. The price of taking early shards. Can I just have Vine Mother and the Morsel Master in the middle? No, they won't fit. Morsel Master on the bottom. I think so, yeah. Uh, you take a hit for him, though. Do we want to try Holdover Perils yet? Probably not really not doing that much for us immediately. Power of the Stings. Hmm. Uh, we'll need to use a train sewer to kill this disciple foot soldier. That's mostly fine. And then the pyre will take three from this priest, unfortunately. So Penumbra kills the overcharged apprentice, train steward hits this thing. some bonus damage. And a train steward friend. Why not? Tumber Salt kill this backline thing. Do I have room in hand? I think so. Yeah. We only got four morsels out this time. It's so much worse than last time. So yes, no, that does count for two on Shadow Box. Good. Also, kill him on the bottom, apparently. Easy. Yeah, this is really the power of Capricious Reflection. So many upgraded cards this early is just making the early floor is very easy. Even more morsels. Morsel miners. Or additional capacity also seems pretty good. 
definitely hurting for floor space. Let's take plus one capacity. Another sting. This one with permafrost or holdover focused growth. If you get minus two cost on this, it's really good. Take the sting with the uh, with the relic. The stings seem pretty good. We did not get to a place where we want to duplicate anything, did we? I don't think so. No, so we should go Merchant of Steel here. We'll also get another Umbra banner, and then we can finally suss out what do we want to do with our units. So we have Quick being offered. Nobody's attacking with enough power to make Quick feel that worth it. Uh, but maybe you? Ooh, Morsel Maker is here. So wait a minute, you're telling me I can infuse Morsel Master into Morsel Maker and then feed our champ four morsels per turn? Because that sounds pretty cool. Set it and forget it. The initial two cost is a bit annoying, but other than that, perfect. Let's try it. Yeah, then we could cross paths into, into Trample because we wouldn't even have to worry about needing capacity to feed. And our champ would be four capacity. Plus one capacity equals five. That's a perfect top floor setup. That's incredible, actually. Yes, yeah, so we have to do it this way. The other way doesn't work. Add spell chain. Hold over spell chain perils of production. Uh, that's pretty nutty, actually. If if hold over perils of production is worth doing, adding spell chain to it just just makes it twice as good. Spell Chain Sting is also kind of a cool thing. All right, that makes Quick a bit more appealing. But is it worth putting quick on Vine Mother? I really doubt it. I think we just want to put health on the Morsel Maker so that it, it's a bit more durable. Um, that'll help against Last Divinity, for example. So I don't think I need any of this. Um, that does mean we're lacking a frontline unit, right? We didn't take an Umbra unit, though. Or we did, rather. We made the thing. But yeah, we're still lacking a, a frontline. May need to go here. Hmm. Getting a unit from the event would also be a thing. Okay, so let's start with this. You get 25 health. You get 10 attack power. And we go here. Ember deposits. Take three calcified ember now, get upgraded versions later. Ooh, that's good, but I don't know if we can survive the short term with three stinky dead cards. These will eventually turn into excavated embers, which are just fantastic to have for free. I really would like those. Let's let's take these. 70 shards? Maybe maybe I'm pushing it. But if we get Penumbra and Morsel Maker deployed, like, it, we're going to be unstoppable. Uh, maybe I should purge a card or two, though, to avoid too much of a disaster here. 
Yeah, let's at least purge one steward. Probably two. Yeah, purging two stewards seems prudent, let's call it. Alright, there's Morsel Maker turn one, so this is Days. Days, Telos. So Penumbra will go to only three health. That's a little worrying, but if we're summoning so many things per turn, she won't attack on the same floor twice in a row. I'm not too worried here. This should be fine. So we go Penumbra first. This I would really prefer she be the push to back version, but that's okay. Penumbra takes 17, kind of spooky, but don't worry. Morsel Maker's here to make it all better. Uh, we could play a Train Steward and get it killed. I think I'd rather play Root Seeds and draw one more card next turn. So yeah, we get four Morsels per turn. Wait a minute. Yeah! Okay, counts. Good, 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 good. Get him, Shadow Box. You show him. Excellent. And we can just suicidally uh, play some morsels here if we want to. The power. So we can just play the perils on the morsels for more energy if we want. But quite frankly, where we're going, we might as well stack rage. So these still get played, even though they're useless. Because it's Channel Box. We actually have too much Morsel Generation now. So, Ember Drain means we won't have any energy at the start of turn. However, because Peril's Spell Chain Holdover, we actually have five Ember per turn, regardless of how much Ember Drain we have. It's pretty good. All right, you're going to heal. That's good. Keep buffing you, I guess. Tasty one here. That's a bit worrisome, actually. Okay, all of this is dying. We need this Conduit Infiltrator to not result in too many units on the floor next turn. So what we're going to do is Entumber Assault the Infiltrator here. Being dazed prevented the Sting from being created? That's kind of cool. Resto Debt. Her blam. Look at that attack power. She has 65 attack power. Morsel Blitz. Get blapped. This is looking like a pretty strong run. 
Very promising. Vine Mother might win, actually. <laughs> Is drop grade the way to go? Definitely. I don't think we're going to need capacity because of what we're doing on the top floor. Just, like, it's overstacking the capacity. Yeah, the Vine Mother does win, lol. Good job, Vine Mother. <laughs> I guess that works too. Apply Trample to a unit of our choice. Why, yes. I would like that. It is three cost, but it is also remove consume, so we can use it on the Vine Mother, too. You know how she likes having Trample. Hmm. Endless Thorned Hollow. We did want to maybe consider one more unit here. Crucible Collector with Gorge Lifesteal, not bad. We could also consider an infusion for Vine Mother. <laughs> Alloyed Construct. Actually, Spike's 10 on Vine Mother is kind of cool. Maybe just make her really big. Yeah, given our, our massive morsel generation, it does seem nice to have another Gorge unit. Does Thorn Hollow keep the Spikes after dying? No. Because spikes are a buff, unfortunately. So Endless Thorned Hollow won't work the way you'd want it to, for example. Interesting, neither the max health doesn't persist either. Curious. We're going to get Monster Train on the YouTube, too? Yeah, there, Monster Train is on the Variety channel. The Plays channel. Has uh, some Monster Train. Main YouTube will only ever have uh, Slay the Spire, but we've, we've got three different YouTube channels now. Baylor Lord main is Slay the Spire only. Baylor Lord plays for non-Slay the Spire stuff. And the archives for a full stream upload. Is Endless Alloyed Construct even a thing? Yeah, pick collector, give it more health. The thing is, what if we're not going to any Merchants of Steel, you know? I'm just going to do the spiky Vine Mother. I like that line. And we're going to go card draw initially to help get a, rid of these um, 
these deadweight curses for now are, are a problem still. I guess we could have looked at one more Awoken Banner. But I'd rather take an artifact and remove two here. Merchant of Magic is not bad, that said. But we're going to go to this Merchant of Magic. Yes, we are. It's all about the removes. You can leave. And you can leave. Draw one when you play a morsel. Well, that's one more card draw per turn. Don't mind if I do. Okay, we are offered monstrous uh, penumbra. However, since we got the trample tome, it's actually far better for us to just go pure glutton and get the absolute enormous stat scaling of that line. Still going to need a way to keep morsels alive on the top floor. That's true. Do I need another Entumbra Assault? I don't actually think I do. She big. And spiky. Yeah, we could also just put them in the middle. The middle floor. For the last Divinity fight, specifically. This is all a problem for future Baylor. So, what about 95 shards? That sounds like a problem for current Baylor. Actually, maybe that's a reason to put 30 magic power on Entumber Assault, so I can kill the really scary units that are going to be created. I don't actually have a good way to do that otherwise. Yeah... All the shards. And these are infiltrators that are going to skip the middle floor. That... That might be a situation where taking 150 gold is risking it too much. Yeah, combat four with this many shards is already very scary. Making it even scarier by adding 15 armor? I don't think I can afford to do that. Hey, that's not a bad wave one. Easy. Vine Mother, show them your spikes. Yeah, but these things with damage shield? Oof. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. We can do this and this. Power of Spikes, actually preventing these multi-attackers from doing too much damage to Vine Mother. Okay, okay. You having 130 health is a bit of a problem. You better weaken you. Um... Resto debt seems great here, as that does 50 damage. And I think I want to Entember Assault you. Feed these to the Vine Mother. Can't play the Umber Stone yet, but uh, that's okay. are going straight to the top. Alright, have some rage, friend. Alright, just enough damage to kill this fiend. Piercing eliminates you. Tumber Assault won't kill, but would remove the damage shield, preventing this Clip Guardian from going to the top floor next turn. 
It's a pretty good idea. And I see we have a lot of room for morsels this turn. We might be able to activate Shadow Box next turn. Uh, which means actually it doesn't matter if you go to the top floor then. Uh, in which case, I may want to Entumber Assault my own Morsel. Let's do that. Kill you. Fun fact, you are allowed to, eat to uh, target your own units with that. It can be very handy. Oh, you still need to die up top here, though. That's two. Perfect. All right, take the damage shield and the health. Wow! I thought for a second I didn't have any morsels. I was like, wait, what? No, we're good, we're good. Assault! Got him. Are you sure you're not winning, Vine Mother? Are you sure about that? We have too many morsels. That is very clear to me here. Nine times three is a lot of attack power. Oh, he's got 31 regen too. That's what's going on. It's like, surely we're doing more damage than that. Yeah, she's healing for like 200. This boss with so many shards is spooky, man. Better not mess around. Make sure we see it's you, actually. Hundred attack power and trample. Actually, you can have trample. Enjoy your trample, boss. I'm sure there's a situation somewhere where you'd actually want to give trample to an enemy. I've never encountered it, though. Emberforge with spikes. That's kind of cute. Time to three. Craft how it's useful to give enemies trample. Melting Remnant would like to, lo would like to know your location. Anything that involves self-harm, Melting Remnant's like, yeah, I want that.
Do I want this excavation eruption? That's what I'm asking myself here. I don't think so. Add three s eternal stone preserved thorns. They're extra preserved. Honestly, this is kind of cool. Spell power and graft is also not bad. Let's take preserved thorns. The card draw it gives is quite nice. Although we'll have to discount it. Since stings give you next turn card draw, it's really not that much of a problem. Also, we've finally carried these calcified embers long enough. They now become excavated embers. Zero cost, consume, gain two ember, and draw one. So our deck just fell, feels a lot smaller. Instead of three curses, we have three draw ones. And you can even do stuff like add spell chain to those if you're feeling particularly spicy. To the Merchant of Magic. Can you remove Consume? Yes, with an Eternal Stone. You sure can. Double stack, which is no use here. Ah, there is a minus two cost. We said we wanted that on the Gem Trove, right? Yeah. Is there anything we want intrinsic? Actually, no, we want it on Umbra Stone. You need to be cheaper. Is there a right order to pick up things on the overworld? Yes, with an asterisk. Uh, there's definitely advantages to be gained from clicking on things in the correct order. However, you don't always have enough information to know which order is correct, is the tricky part. And the order may depend on uh, the specific nodes available, the specific artifacts you have, the specific artifacts you could have, and stuff like that. However, a general rule of advice, you're allowed to look at the contents of the merchant without affecting anything else. So your first action should always be look at the merchant, but don't necessarily do anything at the merchant yet. Just see what's there. Uh, this is particularly important when you've got a merchant of steel and a unit banner on the same floor. You definitely want to look at the merchant of steel then pick the unit with the knowledge of what upgrades you have available. Then go back to the Merchant of Steel and purchase upgrades with whatever's most effective. Um, other general rules, it's often better to upgrade units before visiting the Concealed Caverns, because if you get an upgrade from the Concealed Caverns, you can then stack it on top with a third upgrade slot. So often I advise Concealed Caverns last, or at least later. And yes, I owe the chat a dad joke for Dromar. Did you hear that the Umbra have decided to try to drive the train just using a bar of gold? They heard it was a good conductor. I'm going to lose one of these Resto Deaths and one Shade Splitter. We actually don't need the Shade Splitters very much anymore. Uh, we're going to purchase a cost reduction on Preserved Thorns. Ten magic power here. And let's reroll. Permafrost. Permafrost Excavated Ember is not a thing. Permafrost and Tumber Assault could be okay. Here, you do 20 more damage. And let's start making these Root Seeds cheaper too. Those are nice cards to have at zero cost. Did I want anything here? We already got the minus two cost. Okay. I think we're ready to move forward now. Vortex Hellvent next floor, huh? Hmm. As tempting as it would be to go Penumbra, if we duped Morsel Maker, we'd technically have the capacity to do Penumbra, Morsel Maker, and Morsel Maker on the top floor, which would then generate, at the end of turn, 
each of them would make two morsels, and then each of those morsels would be tripled. So it'd be four times three. Twelve morsels generated at end of turn. Problem is, you can only have seven units on the floor, so we'll only actually generate four morsels in that situation. So you'd want that combo to work, but it doesn't, because of the unit cap. Alas. So, certainly not worth duping you. Hmm. We have a lot of shards. How do we feel about Spell Shield? It's kind of spooky. I'm less afraid of the challenge now that we... Now we should be fine. We have the Excavated Embers on our side now. I think we can take this. Balding Bigfoot, thanks for five months. And the Prime sub. Yeah, when Vine Mother has spikes, who needs... Who needs other stuff? My mother will defend herself just fine. Look at her go. So handy. Maybe you wanted to actually... Actually, you know, I can put two morsels down. That's good. Good. Very, very good. So yeah, do this. Have two life steal, my friends. Oh. Don't mind if I do. Don't forget that shadow box is going to help out too. All right, we just want to hold over a spell chain uh, every turn on our uh, champ now because of the trample. Don't overthink it. Feels like this could easily be a deck where taking... Hmm. Could kill one of the morsels on the top floor to get two for the Vine Mother? It's kind of funny. Spell shield block this? Yes. Still a good spell. Yeah, taking additional card draw may not be useful, as we'll often have turns, because of all these Awoken plus Dronix turn cards, we'll often already have turns where we're drawing 10 cards. So what's the point? He plans to visit revisit Brotato. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing Brotato on an occasional basis moving forward. It's, it's certainly part of the game rotation at this point. Really enjoy me, the Brotato. Brotato. Yeah, for example, here we're going to draw 10 cards next turn. Again. Like, super duper. Uh, Shadow Box goes off probably next turn, too. Okay. Especially if I do this. So it should automatically happen at the start of the turn, if I understand it correctly. Let's see how the timing works out here. Oh, literally right then. Cool. Wow, that was awesome timing. <laughs> Get blitzed, fools. Get blitzed. Stealing viewers to the Hellrush? No, please have fun with each other. Hellrush is a cool mode. Please enjoy. 
especially on the Saturday streams, I couldn't give a hoot how many people are here, quite frankly. I'm just here to put on a show and have a good time. The fact that there are 800 is like way above expectation anyway. I do have a privileged position uh, somewhat on, on Twitch to be able to, to say that. I am dependent on streaming as my full-time job, and I rely on support from both ad revenue of YouTube and viewers like you who support the stream, but also the support that I've gotten from both of those things is so much at this point that I don't have to try to min-max my community very much. I don't have to squeeze or beg or plead or any of that because I've, I'm taken care of, quite frankly. So I get to do whatever I want and I love it. Call. Bring the stinky cheese. You know it. Have some stings. Have some damage shield. Although the sweep will kill the morsels, right? So, whatever. Just eat some life steal. Can't believe Vine Mother isn't single-handedly killing this boss. How disappointing. I don't want to give the boss sweep trample, that would actually genuinely hurt me quite a lot. Yeah, don't don't give the boss sweep trample. Just just don't do it. Would a duped morsel master work with the vine mother? It would make four morsels for the vine mother each turn. Hmm. Is that actually good? I don't think it is. Hmm. It's a fun thought, though. Engine upgrades, interesting, but if we're doing uh, Ember Drain things, it won't matter at all. Mizuza, thanks for ten months. The absurd YouTube runs. We've been having the the. Mastery Challenge has just created some amazing runs. Grats on your first condo. That's huge. That's awesome. Is that a new channel cutie? Miss Achiever. Welcome to the list of channel cuties. All hail a new channel cutie. Let me see some celebratory waffles in chat. Can't allow a cutie to be inducted to the list without some proper fanfare. Good to have you as part of the community, Miss Achiever. From the problems IRL days to today, it's good stuff. There you go. And Ristona, thanks for the quarter century, 25 months. Eh, skip these. Believe it or not, Invigorating Solution actually seems useless. 
This might be a nice time to pick up a Pyre Shards. Just win the run with a Pyre Shards. Adding a few extra points of Thorns to Vine Mother doesn't even seem like a bad thing. And Anonymous, thanks for gifting us up to Miss Achiever. Get back in the cozy sub club. How do you be a cutie without being a sub? That's incredible. The power. So, anything to dupe? Unstable Vortex Hellvent sounds kind of cool, actually. We could even just dupe an excavated ember. We could dupe the perils of production. That's also kind of absurd. Or, as established, we could dupe the Morsel Maker, and then fun things happen. The stairs also always, yeah, eh, broadly pickable. I'm trying to wonder what uh, double gorge would be the the like the real way to get out of control here. Squall Flunter, thanks for ten months. Why don't I upload other game runs to the YouTube channel? That, Mizuza, is because we have a different YouTube channel for the non-Spire games. Lord Plays. There's a link to it. We actually have three YouTube channels. It can be a little confusing, I know, but it turns out it's, it's kind of better to just keep them separate so that each is subjected to their own analytics and search optimizations and whatever. Anywho. There's a whole ton of non-Spire content on the Plays uh, channel, if you want to see me doing stuff that ain't Spire. And there's all links to all three. The Archives is a full stream upload, and the Bela Lord main channel is Spire only. Spire and Spire Guides. I could go double Vine Mother, actually. We have room for another one of these ladies, don't we? We do, in the middle floor. Although it'll make it more difficult to play Morsels. I think I want to go to, to this Merchant of Trinkets, though. One of the, Like I said, the biggest thing we can get is... Um, not, is it Fossilized Fangs? Is that what they're called? This is bad. When a card with Consume is played, deal 30 to the front enemy unit. That's really strong, though, with these Excavated Embers. We have lots of Consume cards, so this is tons of free damage. Uh, there is 100 gold, right? Yes. So if I buy this and then reroll, I can still buy another thing. There it is, the Fossilized Fangs. Gorge abilities trigger twice. Trying to find this artifact in particular is why we came to the Merchant of Trinkets in the first place. This will essentially make our champ now scale twice as hard, and that means the champ on their own is just going to break the game, especially once we get to the final tier of Glutton. It'll be 30 attack power per morsel. Just think about that for a second. Have some spikes, lady. Tasty. Oh, it's this Arcus. Understood. You have stealth? Yeah, okay. So no early death for you. Bummer. The all powerful. I want to see how high that attack gets. Hey, 
non moral C unit. Well, good good news. I'm not going to do that. Currently, you don't need trample. Lady, you may have trample. Oh, there's perils. Good talk. Hmm, that'd be an interesting way to deal with Seraph. Hold over Gemtro. Hmm, food for thought. Extra morsel storage. Go! Hey, this is also a situation where the combat preview is lying. Neat. What's happening? We're not taking damage, that's for sure. Because of the shadow box. That's what's happening if we end turn. That's also why there were morsels on the middle floor for the shadow box. They don't fit anywhere else. Right. Where else would they go? You know, I actually don't mind this Seraph. I was complaining, but this is the only Seraph that doesn't penalize you for Encant, so actually they're not bad. I don't want more damage shield. Uh, I'll take this though. Or not Seraph. Arcus? Arcus. That's the name of this four winged angel boss. You can see why they're a little confusing. Cool. 400 attack power. Oh man. Good job, Vine Mother.
occurs to me that we might have too many stings. Hundred <laughs> attack power. Dang. And add quick if we need feel the need. This seems like a good time to just get cycle of life done. Swap health and uh, attack power. Adaptive mutations also really cool here because we can add huge health to Penumbra and be the tankiest thing in the world. Quick trample on the champ is also, like, awesome, right? We just wipe the floor completely clean without any problems. Oh, yeah, Adaptive Mutation is silly with Rage. Yes, we're taking Adaptive Mutation. That's right, it does work with Rage. Well, we can't benefit from Card Draw. We can't benefit from Ember. This barely does anything. I guess we'll take Light of Seraph. But honestly, none of these really matter very much. I guess Herzl's Compound is one more card on turn one, crucially. I don't think I care enough. Light of Seraph makes going in the middle a bit easier for us. That sounds quite nice. Merchant of Magic. Don't need the Pyre Health. I guess I'll go Artifact, Merchant of Steel, Concealed Caverns. Yeah, it doesn't matter if we're quick if enemies that get to the top are simply dazed. That's basically like having quick. Not particularly desperate for anything. Still only 2020. That is a little scary, though. This version of Penumbra, very vulnerable to getting killed turn one. Uh, but now we're getting 30 attack and 12 health per morsel. That's truly absurd. None of these seem that important. Purge a card, gain a card, sure. Have a shade splitter. We can skip the card that gets added. Random rare awoken or random rare umbra? Uh, specifically a non-unit rare. Let me just take a look at the logbook here. Umbra, Awoken, I can't look at them both. Rare, just the spells. Could get the Wildwood Tome, Adaptive Mutation, or Awoken Rail Spike. With Umbra, we're looking at... Maybe Shroud Spike? Shroud Spike's ridiculous. Shroud Mitosis is also ridiculous. Furnace Tap is ridiculous. Okay, yeah, the Umbra ones are great. Forever Consumed. 30x damage to the front enemy units. That actually could be pretty helpful. Although it's another card we don't need. Let's get this one. Acceptable. Not even going to question whether I should take that trial or not. We're just going to do it. You were the reason for the covenant in the first place. 
they say. The lure. Play this on the bottom for the damage. Could Gem Trove or I can play Vine Mother. I'm gonna make a fun slash weird choice here. I get them both. Perfect. Best of both worlds. Easy. Have a lifesteal, Vine Mother. Good talk. Already at 158. spells this turn, though. I think we just want to apply Trample. Forget all the rest. Good. Excellent. Oh no, Bailey! The Blights! Rip. The Blights. Could keep Vine Mother alive. I don't think we need to, though. How cruel. Wait, Marcel Blitz! Ha! Ah, that'll do it. Easy. Need more morsels. Yeah. Keep her in the game, please. We'll use Adaptive Mutation on this turn just to get even crazier stats on Penumbra here. So, when you use Adaptive Mutation on a unit that has Rage, you count the Rage as part of your attack power. For, for swapping attack and health, but then you keep the rage, so your attack is further boosted by the rage once you've done the swap. 
So we'll go to 700 hit points and 300 attack power rather than about 300 hit points and 700 attack power. But we're up, uh, still up 42 damage in the trade. And we're tanky as heck now. I love it. Have some more souls. So big. How's it going, Zerbs? This Bind Mother is infused with the uh, Thorned Hollow. So she's got bonus spikes, bonus health, and also a large stone to make her even bigger. Maximum big. You got this, Vine Lady. Hit that boss. Show that boss who the boss is. It's us. Actually stacking the boss's attack power, not that the boss has even the vaguest chance of doing anything to Penumbra. This boss is so badly outstatted. And is dazed. Oof. Doesn't even get one hit in. Just the damage shield blocks it. Trigger feeding on units with eaten abilities. Ooh. One, we don't have a win with feast. Two, this would actually allow us to feed even more morsels to our champ here. Yeah. Double stack and snare. We don't we don't need that. Yeah, that can also help us on turn one if we draw it. That'd be a good one for uh, no, that's not a good one for intrinsic. Skip all these. So what do you think? Hellvent, Unstable Vortex? Probably better to go Merchant of Magic. What'd I dupe? Exactly. We don't have any good dupes. Not the way I see it. Hmm, double damage spikes is kind of neat. Apply damage shield 2 to the first friendly unit summoned each turn. That helps Penumbra stay alive, at minimum. Sure. Don't think I'll take Petrified Crucible. There it is, Winged Technology. Morsel units enter with damage shield one. That'll allow us to top floor divinity easily. Hell's Banners is also kind of good. Let's just take the damage shield. Ooh. Oh yeah, and and we got holdover gem trove, which also would work. Run Feast is definitely interesting. Sure. Especially with Permafrost. That way I don't have to play it every turn.
<laughs> just take the money. Easy. Just take the money. Pay 265 gold to gain 270 gold. Yeah. We could add more shards, but it really doesn't benefit us to do so. So, let's not. Let us not. Oof, that's a spooky first wave. Good talk. Practically dies. I guess we can put her in the middle. Yeah, you go in the middle, lady. Lady. Um, yeah, that wasn't actually the correct order, but I think it'll work. Gotta remember about that. Seems important. Here, you have the boost. Curse adding enemy is going to be a persistent annoyance. Nothing we can't deal with, though. Beautiful. Some damage shield. Also, tank hits with these things if we want to. Saves us a lot of health. All right. I should have put that one in front. Blah. Awkward. Looks out though. Okay, that's fine. We'll get used to the chain of gems in a moment. Uh, don't consume that. Consume this! Here. Uh, no, actually here. Then play this. Gotta be careful about the ordering of our cards here. Get rid of this. This and this. Eat. Eat even more. More health. But they both get three damage shield and ever drain because they, uh, they it is truly duplicated. It's kind of neat. Trample doesn't have hit enemies that have stealth. How rude. I do want one more capacity on the top floor, don't I? Good turn.
Uh, we'll do it this. No, it's going to have damage shield. I can't kill my morsels with Entumber Assault now. Dang it. Oh no. <laughs> what have I done? I've made a terrible mistake. Terrible, terrible mistake. We just do that. I'm going to play Preserve Thorns again. I'm going to use the... This consumes, actually. Boost her. Let's do it. She angie. All right, good talk. Sarah finally decided to show up. Good for him. How does the combination of sweep and trample work? Overkill damage on units in the back of the row are applied to the frontmost unit. So you get to benefit from overkill damage even on units that are behind the unit in question. It's really, really strong, basically. Ah, I can't believe I just got three Morsel Miners. Hype. My favorite class in this game is definitely the Wormkin, Kuchella. Really like the consume abuse they can perform. It's quite potent. Seventeen by three, huh, Seraph? See how you like my 1500 damage penumbra. GG, Seraph. Get absolutely overkilled.
trample hug. Overkill damage applies to the next boss, if only. If only. Either in victory or defeat, the last divinity's endless destruction rages, rages on. We did not get our turn one Morsel Master, or maybe we did. What we did get is turn one Perils of Production, which is very exciting. However, 11 damage sweep looks problematic. Put this on the bottom. Aha! Okay, Morsel Master is here. Which makes me think that we might actually want to do Morsel Master Penumbra in the middle floor here. Although we do have damage shield morsels, what we don't have is a way to keep the Morsel ma Maker alive through the Divinity's sweep attacks. Other than, I guess, the Restoration Detonations, which are... There's only one of them. And the Gem Trove can help, too. So we can prolong the Morsel Maker's life, but it, it really does seem like a ticking clock. Although we're going to struggle to survive next turn. How about Morsel make Master Penumbra on the bottom level? Penumbra is instantly killed if we do that. So no. <laughs> These edit this this floor is dealing like 50 damage. Oh, that's true. We do get damage shields. Good reminder. Chain of Gems is here. Yes, even with the damage shields, we're instantly killed on the bottom floor. So if we put Morsel Maker down first, actually, we have a pretty good time up top. So that tells me we should go Morsel Maker, Penumbra up top. Just play the Morsel Maker first. How much stats will Penumbra have turn two? 2020. 20. They don't eat until turn three. Unless I use uh, Feast. Alright, means you go in the middle. Is the boss going to sweep all our morsels? Yes. However, the morsels all have one damage shield, so they're immune to it. Normally, that would have made deploying on the top not viable here. Oh, we did get feast. Okay. Well, how do you do? All right, we don't have to consume or anything. Just do this. All right, now all the morsels we can get, the better. So Blitz is pretty important. Make sure we play these. I 
I died to spikes. Cute. Here we go. Now I can feed even more morsels. Good. Fine mother's dying, I don't really care. Where's our trample stone? Hmm. Uh, won't matter though. Okay, good. Yeah, this is great timing. Should wait, I want the next wave to arrive. Lose a little bit of stat scaling, but I'd actually prefer Morsel make Morsel uh, Shadow Box go off next turn. If we deploy Morsels now, um, then it'll activate with the current layout. We want to wait one more turn and get another enemy wave destroyed. Uh, although I am allowed to feed one, play one Morsel on the lady's floor, which will actually. Maybe help keep her alive. Yeah, it does. Good. We should do that too. We can also use this for damage. Like that. Or something, whatever. Uh, okay, now we're done. So cram that train full of nonsense. And now we can play a morsel? Question mark? There's no morsels to play. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. that doesn't matter. Actually, it does a little bit. Shadow Box indeed will save us. Note that does 450 damage to the boss, too. Floor gets hit for 150. Oh, I should have weakened this guy so we can get an Untumbro Assault kill. That's fine. Got plenty of morsels to feed anyway. That's more attack power. Vine Mother, you did a good job. You can also do this. Stay in there, Vine Mother. That's what you're here for, right? Hmm. 
could have could have fed on our own morsel maker. That would have been fun. Hmm. Looking pretty hard to keep you alive there. Though. Yeah, pretty hard to keep you alive. What if... Easy. Stay alive. Mostly Tubsess, yeah. There, here's the full list of modifiers if you want to like screen cap or stare at it for a minute. There are a few duplicates in the list, so it's not quite like Spire in that regard. But yeah, 25 stacking penalties. Is the, the yeah. Ours goes to 11. Tell you later, Vine Mother. Good talk. I maybe could have saved you for one more turn, but it's completely irrelevant. We have, uh, we have done the thing. It'd be pretty impossible for Penumbra to lose now. In fact, we'll probably win before anything even really happens. For the endless phase, the relentless phase, whatever you want to call it. Although we are finally losing the Morsel Maker, we were indeed not able to keep Morsel Maker alive indefinitely. Oh, wait, actually, never mind. Good old Resto Dead. This is not the end. Isn't it, though, Divinity? Isn't it? What a what a ridiculous scaling run. 1,700 attack power on the champ. That's truly absurd. just wipes the entire floor and the boss with one attack. Dang. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.